This is one of the most insane titles in the history of Nintendo games. Today, the game is actually praised by many, and is even considered to be one of the greatest N64 games out there. Conquer the Squirrel is a creation of Rare, and probably one of their most notable characters ever made. His first in-game appearance is shown in Diddy Kong Racing for the N64, as one of the game's many playable characters. He was also introduced to the world for the very first time at E3 in 1997, months before Diddy Kong Racing. Although most of the things in Bad Fur Day are either hilarious or enjoyable, Bad Fur Day was sadly not a huge commercial success due to the game being one of the last big releases for the N64, and not to mention the game's extensive variety of mature content. Rare had decided to aim toward a more mature audience instead of their usual family-friendly game. This turned the cute and innocent character into something else entirely. Conker was given his own adventurous story, which gave him the level of popularity that he has today. Conker's Bad Fur Day is a 3D platformer that was released for the Nintendo 64 on March 5th, 2001. The game was both published and developed by Rare, and was also one of the very last games for the console. There is also a remake of the single player mode that was exclusively released for the original Xbox in June 2005, almost 4 years later. Both of the games are also rated M for Mature. I honestly feel like parents would only notice the sweet innocent squirrel on the front cover of the box. But little did they know. So yeah, if you've never played this game before, it's probably due to the game's wide variety of mature content. Meaning the game's blood, gore, freaking use of swearing, many sexual references, nudity, vomit, piss, and shit, drinking, and even drugs. On the front cover of the box, it even says that this game is not for anyone under age 17. But let's all be honest here, I don't think anyone gave fat flying fuck. So if you're easily offended, or just a very young player, this game probably isn't for you. Bad Fur Day is obviously intended for a mature audience, unlike Banjo-Kazooie, one of Nintendo's greatest 3D platformers, and by far, one of their greatest video games ever made. From a massive opera singing pile of shit to a race of killer robotic teddy bears, this game literally has everything that you can think of when you picture an M-rated game. The game was somewhat popular at the time of its release, even though it was meant for a more mature audience. This might come as a surprise to some, but if you didn't know, South Park was extremely popular and controversial at the time, and in many ways, this game borrowed the show's style. One of the game's greatest features is its multiplayer game mode, which was incredibly fun and enjoyable at the time. It has many different game types, and can have up to 4 players who can compete against each other. It was even played alongside games like Mario Kart, Diddy Kong Racing, and even more. Throughout the game, the player is tasked with challenges such as boss fights, puzzle solving, collecting items, objects, and so forth. When completing them, the player is always awarded money, which helps gain access to other areas in the game. When picking them up, however, they usually always end up swearing at or insulting Conker, which is probably one of the smallest but most humorous parts of the game. As for the controls of the game, they are much simpler than Rare's previous platform games, such as Donkey Kong 64 and the previous Banjo-Kazooie games. The controls even include the ability to smack enemies with a frying pan. Another creative addition to the game is if needed, Conker can gain health by eating bar bars of chocolate that are spread throughout each level. The plot of Conker's Bad Fur Day ends up being somewhat unique. This isn't your average storyline. One of the main villains of the game, known as the Panther King, literally has his scientist, for some reason, find a red squirrel to be used as a table leg replacement so the Panther King's table won't tip over, because all he wants is his milk. I mean seriously, like you really can't make this shit up. In the very beginning of the game, Conker plans on returning home to his girlfriend Barry, who has a close resemblance to Lola Bunny from the Looney Tunes franchise. Barry also appears in the very first scene soon after Conker's intro. When Conker gets blackout drunk after hanging out with his friends, he leaves the pub and heads the opposite direction. He eventually strays too far from home, and ends up getting sidetracked into some crazy situations, like being in the Matrix and fighting alongside Barry, to fighting a war between grey squirrels and teddy bears. I don't want to go too far into the story, but the point is, it's a very chaotic and memorable storyline. One of the best parts about it is of course, it's characters. Now most of the characters within the game are either distinctive, or just straight up hysterical. Let's take King B for example. 
He has terrible luck, so we ask Conker to help him pollinate with who King Bee describes as a big breasted babe. Not to mention the other character who's similar to Sunflower, known as Jugs. And you don't really need to be a genius to figure out why she's called that. Whom of which Conker finds attractive. Carl and Quentin are probably two of the funniest characters in the game, even though they're the same character, except one side of the cog is an ill-mannered potty mouth. Conker is probably the most humorous character in the game, mainly due to his voice lines and amazing comical remarks. The money that you pick up gives funny voice lines as well, along with many other characters in the game that are hilarious, such as the Great Mighty Pooh, who's one of the game's most notable characters. When you first encounter him in-game, he starts singing as if he's in an opera. Speaking of shit, this is what plays throughout chapter 5. Pretty nasty, right? But obviously there are plenty of other noteworthy characters. This topic is one of the greatest aspects of the game, and it might be one of its most memorable features when it comes to this masterpiece. The music in Conker's Bad Fur Day is honestly a job well done, and even today still holds as a great feature of the game. A large majority of people who've played this game might agree that even if the game aged well or not, the music is still phenomenal 20 years later. The cheerful and exuberant music honestly makes the game enjoyable, and fits every mood perfectly, whether it be ominous or delightful. So if you've never played this game, or just never wanted to, at least give the game's soundtrack a chance. You could say that it's not your typical Nintendo music. Of course, Rare has other games with music that are similar to Bad Fur Day. It's quite obvious that the game resents that playful music seen in games like the Banjo-Kazooie series, due to their goal to aim towards a family-friendly audience. The music wasn't the only reason that Rare was so popular back then, before Microsoft purchased Rare for nearly $400 million over a year after the game's release. Rare's games are to this day seen as some of the greatest video games ever made, and the Donkey Kong Country series is a huge one. The music that's played in each of the chapters are fantastic, with plenty of songs to suit the mood. They also represent each level, whether it be boss fights, storming the beaches of Normandy as if you were playing Medal of Honor, or even mowing down the undead. The game, along with this music, definitely has a blast of creativity to it. I had stated earlier in the video how Conker's Bad Fur Day sold well below expectations and how it wasn't such a massive success due to other reasons such as limited advertising. But what I didn't mention was what people might not expect about the game on how it gained critical acclaim and over the years, the game has even developed a cult following. The game received many positive reviews, talking about its great comical remarks, geniusly weird missions, and top-notch graphics. A critic even went far enough to state that the game makes other Nintendo 64 games look like 16-bit software. But obviously, every game has downsides to them, such as their negative feedback. Listen, the game might not have sold well in the beginning, but in the end, people started to appreciate the game more, and because of that, Bad Fur Day has gained a lot of popularity. Overall, Rare's deciding factor of the fate of the game had been aimed towards a slightly older audience, like college kids and high schoolers, but the game also showed interest to younger audiences as well. These days, the game may be seen by some, or even many, to have aged poorly due to its graphics, controls, and so forth. So, whether the game is loved or hated, Conker's Bad Fur Day will always remain as one of the most creative and cherished Nintendo games ever made, despite its downsides. I hope you enjoyed the real story behind the game, and why it's either praised or heavily criticized. If you haven't noticed already, this is mainly a Nintendo game review channel, and to make videos on what made a lot of the Nintendo games the way they are now, or how they're remembered. Let me know what you think about the game, as well as this video, in the comments below. Miz, everyone, it was an absolute pleasure making this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, much love guys. Peace.